today we're going to make a concrete table that's lightweight. We're going to start with a solid core door. I got one that was 30 inches wide and I'm going to trim down the length just a little bit using my circular saw and my straight edge cutting guide from Craig. I'm going to use spider legs from Semi-Exact in Casual Turtle. This is my signature color, and these are really cool legs that were designed by Chris Salamone of Four Eyes Furniture for Semi-Exact. The legs are heavy-duty welded steel, and they have a powder coating, which is great because this table is going outside. I use one and a quarter inch long cabinet screws to secure the legs to the door. One of the details that I really like is that they have slots instead of holes, which gives you a lot of flexibility on screw placement. Now we could just flip it over as it is and have a pretty decent table. And actually when I first started my architecture firm, all of our desks were just doors on sawhorses. But this masonite and particle board door would not hold up under the elements of the outdoors. And that's why I was interested in seeing if I could apply a thin coat of concrete over the top. I don't want the concrete to crack and a quarter inch thick coat of concrete will definitely crack without reinforcement. So I picked up a roll of this mesh fiber tape from Home Depot. I made sure to use the fiber tape that's meant for cement board because it's alkali resistant, unlike many of the fiberglass tapes that are used for gypsum board. I decided to have the concrete not just on top of the table, but have it wrap around the sides as well. So I cut some plastic signboard with a box cutter so that I can use these strips as a perimeter form. I screwed them to some pieces of 2x6 and then screwed those 2x6s underneath the table, creating about a half inch gap between the signboard and the edge of the door. I also considered just putting the fiber tape on the edges of the door and just brushing the concrete down along the sides. But I was curious how a thicker edge would hold up. And I wanted to maintain a consistent level of moisture protection on the sides in addition to the top. I sealed the gaps with silicone caulk and was ready to add primer to the tabletop. I want the concrete to really adhere to the door and the fiber tape. So I'm using Quickrete Concrete Bonding Adhesive. You just dilute this with water and then roll it right onto the surface. For the concrete, I'm using Quickrete Self-Leveling floor resurfacer. This is the third time I'm using a product. It's a really interesting one, but I highly suggest experimenting on a small project before tackling something as big as a table. I made the mistake of trying a floor first and well, if you watch that video, you're gonna see a few mistakes or rather lessons learned. I measured out the water and then mixed in a single 50 pound bag. I then split the mix into two buckets so they could add a little bit of a lime strong pigment to one of the buckets. I'm using a slate gray, so this is just gonna make the concrete a little bit darker, which will allow me to create some patterns in the surface. And now for the fun part. This floor resurfacing mix is way thinner and doesn't have aggregate like the typical Quickcrete 5000 that I use, which means that I can scoop it up with a bucket or a container and just pour it right on the surface. And because it's thin, it will self level. Now the cool design opportunity here is to take the two different tones and you can kind of make subtle swirly type patterns with them. Now the obvious thing to do, which in my opinion is a little overdone, would be to do some sort of faux marble finish. I'm more interested in something that looks a little bit like wood grain, and so I experimented making different concentric rings by switching between the two different tones of concrete. Now, I didn't add that much pigment, so this differentiation is pretty subtle. I let it sit for about three hours, and then I put some sticks over it and covered it with a plastic tarp. This is just going to keep a lot of the moisture in so that it doesn't dry out too fast and crack. I let it sit a full 24 hours before removing the screws and peeling off the forms. 
The concrete will still continue to cure, but it's certainly hard to detach now. And I just sprayed it down with a water bottle. This just gives it a little more moisture on the surface and helps with the curing process. The concrete is flat, but there were a few bubbles here or there or like little grains of sand that are just sticking up. And I just sanded these down with 220 grit sandpaper. Now the edge is securely attached, but I did have a little hairline crack around some places around the perimeter. And that just came, I think, because the concrete settled down as it cured. But it's still structurally on there really well, so I'm not worried about it falling or flaking off. I just filled it with some quickcrete crack repair, let that fully cure, and then sanded it down so just the crack is full and you're seeing the original concrete on either side. This worked pretty well, but I probably could have done this a little bit easier just using some of the floor resurfacer. I waited a couple more days for the concrete to fully dry all the way out and then sealed it with some water-based polyurethane in matte. I added a thick coat, let that cure, sanded it down just a little bit with 400 grit paper, and then added a second coat. This was a really easy project, and I think the table came out pretty good. It does, however, look a little bit more like stone than it does like polished concrete, or at least the type of concrete that I associate with, you know, concrete countertops. It's going to be great as an outdoor table where a little bit more of a rustic look makes sense. Although I am curious to see if expansion and contraction from day-night temperature cycles do eventually cause it to crack. But we've moved it around a few times so far and no cracks, so think it's safe to be optimistic. Thanks for watching this video, and if you want to know more about the concrete products that I use, be sure to go to quickcrete.com. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks!